Welcome to another Blueprint IoT video. This video is part of a video series about Node-RED and this video is about the delay node. You can find the delay node right here on the left hand side, right under the function nodes. You can just drag and drop it like every other node as well. So before we're going to use it, let's take a closer look on the options we have. First of all, we can have a fixed delay for each message in a very classy way like five seconds for every message that comes in. So every message that will enter the node will be delayed by five seconds and then forwarded towards the next node. Since this is a very easy approach, let's give it a try. Just try three seconds as the delay. And of course we have to integrate it between the inject and the debug node. We could delete this line, but we could also just move it right between it and just drop it there and now it's just integrated right in the middle. So let's go ahead, we will inject the message now and three seconds later it should pop up on the right hand side in the debug menu. And here we go, this was exactly three seconds. We get the message, hello world, topic, blueprint IoT, and everything works fine. We already get this little indicator here. So at the moment it's zero. As soon as we click here, we see a little one. So we can see that this indicator is showing us the messages that are about to be delayed. And as soon as we click several times here, we can see that's kind of the queue that's waiting in line to be forwarded. But let's check the other options. Beside a fixed delay, we have of course a random delay or we can override the delay with message.delay. So you could use this node just as a tool and define the actual delay in your object when you inject whatever kind of information. Let's stay with the fixed delay for the moment, but there's another whole different option we can choose from, which is not a delay, it is a rate limit. So what the rate limit does is it's limiting the number of messages which are allowed to pass through the delay node within a certain time frame. So for example, now it's one message per second, but let's have a different example, five messages per minute, for example. So now we have two options. Option one, in case we get more than those five messages per minute, we could queue them and wait until the next minute and we are allowed to pass through the next five messages at max or we could drop immediate messages. This can come in very handy in case you have a lot of measurements uh, by a sensor you cannot really trigger the time it's measuring for example something that's counting or whatever and you just want to have a certain maximum messages forwarded to not overpower your whole flow your whole processing of the sensor values or in case you want to have a straight measurement series where you have one measurement every minute or where you have one word measurement every 15 seconds or something like this then it's very handy to just drop everything in between and always get after every minute the latest measurement to be forwarded. So let's try this one with five messages every 10 seconds so basically one message every two seconds and we drop the intermediate messages so here we go one two and we keep injecting several messages and you see it's only one every two seconds so it's basically breaking down the rate limit to one message every two seconds instead of forwarding two messages in the very first second and then wait for another second so it's always distributing your rate evenly across the whole time frame. So let's stop this and take a look how it would look like in case we will not drop the messages, we would queue them. So here we go. We see the queue is already indicated and I'm injecting much more than we can handle. So now you can see that it takes some time to work down the way until zero messages in queue but this will take a while also a nice option in case you want to have a bunch of calculations going on afterwards and you just want to make sure to really work with each value at a time and not overwhelming your whole flow and your whole computing power but let's take a look on the last option 
which is send intermediate messages to the second output. That's also quite interesting. So in case we have another limit, like five messages per minute, like before, it's very likely that we overwhelm this flow quite quick. So let's just put another debug node on the second output. In this case, the standard debug node, which is just reading the payload will be enough. We won't have any benefit from knowing the topic because it will be the same anyway. So let's give it a try. So we start injecting messages and you can see as fast as we are doing it, we will get it right away. We get the response on the debug node. It was very easy to spot which one is which debug node because the full object was the first one and the second one, which is only the payload, was the second one. In case you're wondering what we are talking about, the debug node with whole object and only the message or payload, please feel free to check out our previous video up here. So what we've seen, we allow only five messages per minute, which equals to one message every 12 seconds. So in this case, our flow was just letting one message through and every other messages would be normally queued or dumped, but in our case, it was just forwarded to the second output. And the second output will just eat everything. So there will be no limit like one message every 12 seconds or whatever, all the other messages, all the intermediate messages will go to the second output. So let's just make use of the repeat interval once per second. So we can get a nice injection and now we should see after 12 seconds, there should be one more message forwarded to the first output. So we would, should see the whole object. And here we go. After 12 seconds, we get the next message forwarded to the first output and then everything in between goes to the second output again. So this could come in quite useful in case you're triggering a, some kind of action like a pump or a fan or whatever, and you just wanna trigger this every 12 seconds or every minute or whatever, you wanna update this frequency because otherwise you may have a lot of toggling on your fan, like starting up, stopping again, starting up, stopping again. So you wanna have at least 12 seconds but all the measurements in between may be interesting for your analysis, for your data storage. So you wanna feed all this data into your database. So you could just connect here on the second output, your database. Of course, you should have a separate flow here injecting all this information into an SQL database or whatever. And on the first output, you could just put in your flow that will trigger an action. So how to build flows which trigger actions or feed data into a database will be a topic for further videos. So that's all you need to know about the delay node. Please make sure to be subscribed for all the further videos about Node-RED and all its different functions. So thanks for watching and see you next time.